1949, a group of British women found out about some children who had been uh, brought to Israel from, from the Holocaust, who had no families or whose families were traumatized. And they were essentially refugees and there was nowhere for them to live. And they decided to take uh, uh, this issue into their own hands and find a solution. They called themselves the Child Resettlement Fund. And they built a number of huts, uh, small buildings on this site here in Afula, uh, where they established the Sarah Herzog uh, Emona Children's Home, which has expanded and now become a haven for uh, 200 children. But that was the, uh, that's really where it started out. The children who come to Emona have been through the most traumatic and difficult experiences. You cannot believe sometimes. I've been working at Emona for 32 years, and every time I think I've seen everything, uh, we get another uh, child arriving with a worse circumstance. So they've been starved, they've been abused, they've had cigarettes put out on their arms and legs, they've been beaten, they've been locked in toilets to make them more obedient, to make them uh, better behaved. So these children have from a very young age have been seriously, seriously neglected and uh, have been in such severe places where they've needed to be removed from their families by the social services. An extreme, very, very expensive and uh, uh, perhaps traumatic measure which is taken by the state only in the, in the worst, worst cases. And these are the children that we have at Emona. I have been in Emuna for about six years. I came here with all my siblings, which is a blessing because it's not something that is just happens because it's really hard to put seven siblings in one place. When I came to Emuna, I was scared, but I uh, had amazing people who who helped me through that. They guide you and show you a better way of becoming a better person and you, you learn a lot of things from everybody. Everybody you meet here, you learn something from them. This place is a wonderful place. There's so many people here that are there to help you and to support you and to be there with you whenever you are down or in a, in a rough spot. For any kid who leaves their home and comes to a place that is not known to them, and either if they're alone or with other siblings or any, any sort of support, it's still scary. And you come here and you are amazingly surprised you know, because they have a lot of people who understand, like a lot of kids who come here who understand them and they're there for them. And, and you know, it's values that you learn here and, and everything, it's, it's amazing. We help these children in every way you can imagine, just like parents do. In fact, people ask me, how long are you going to take care of these children? What are you going to give to these children? And I look at them and I say, what do you give to your children? When do you stop caring for your children? And of course, there's no need for an answer because it's evident that we take care of these children in the same way as any parent would take care of their children. So it is our responsibility as a, as a community, as a people, as individuals, to try and change that child's perception of the world, of the city, of the community, of the family, in order that they will be able to relate to other people and not fear the world, we need to show them that the world can be a good place to live in.